you thinking that I'm mean is not an argument. It has nothing to do with the truth or falsity of anybody's position. You believing that I am a KGB sorcerer has nothing to do with any truth or falsity of anything. You believing that I'm a Wiccan, <laughs> you'll start to notice uh, parallels and similarities to the... Oops. <laughs> has nothing to do with the truth or falsity of anything. You think that I am a high-profile drug mule. <laughs> <laughs> that has nothing to do with anything. You said, I'm you, dude. How are you? Good. Hey, I got a question for you. Um, hold on. I, I just... Hold on. I got to get mean. I'm getting mean. Okay. You're really, really mean. Okay, now I'm mean. Go ahead. The real Nat Paris. What's up, dude? The real Nat Paris. What's up, man? What up, bro? How you doing? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Dude, I want to unpack a polemic you've just been uh, telling the last few guests. Help me out here. Genuinely, Goodwill. I'm just using your words as an example. Okay. You claim you're part of the Orthodox Church, Orthodox faith. Um, I, I'm not claiming I am. It's easy to verify that. So let's unpack that a little bit. Um, you belong to Rokor from the Russian Sea, Moscow specifically, not one of the five original seas. There we go. My question... Can you hear me, bro? Why are you calling me bro? Are, are you a bro? Or like, no. why are you calling me bro? No, I'm asking, can you hear me? Sounds like a cutout. Can you hear me? Yeah, I'm just asking why you're calling me bro, because I already detect some uh, hostilities here. Why do you think that, I mean, you understand that the Roman Catholic, are you Roman Catholic? Yeah, I'm asking, Jay, I'm just asking you. No, 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 no. I, I Hold on, are you Roman Catholic? Yes, I am. Okay. So I'm do you a, do you Jay, understand? I'm a, Jay, I'm a you, math team. I'm a Matthew 16 enjoyer. Keys of Peter directly from Jesus Christ enjoyer. I'm a Franco Papist enjoyer. I mean, is that supposed to like make me intimidated that you? No, no, brother. No, brother. No, no, we're not brothers. Why you keep calling me brother? You're not my brother. All right. So these these tactics and these this 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 uh. uh, uh. No, so Jay, let's go back to the plumbing. You. Oh, hold on. I'm going to I'm going to refute the dumb argument that you're making right away, which is to say that you understand that your own church in the first uh, ecumenical councils, I think by Nicaea, no, excuse me, by Ephesus, they accepted autocephalous patriarchates. Do you understand that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You came with that slimy style like you guys do. Unpack that. What do you mean? Uh, why are you unpack this? Unpack this. Are you a liberal journalist? I mean, come on, dude. No, I'm not a 19-year-old kid who has no idea about Trinitarian theology and is asking, like, metaphysics. Okay, did you ask your question. Yeah. Can you hear me, Jay? Ask your question. You don't have to repeat my name every time you say a sentence. Let me ask you a question. Genuinely, this is goodwill, Jay, please. Uh, you told me a few weeks back there are no salvific graces in Catholic sacraments. Where does that come from? Help me understand. Right, so the Orthodox view of sacramentology is different than the Roman Catholic view. So first of all, it, which Orthodox view, Jay? Which Orthodox view? Okay, so about? again, it never accepted the uh, ex opere operato doctrine of Augustine. So you can see that in uh, canon law all the way up into the Sixth Council, where it talks about the cases in which rebaptism is necessary. So in the Orthodox view, there's a case by case basis. So a lot of Roman Catholics. They get tripped up on this and they feel like, well, the Orthodox Jew doesn't have a single answer to this question because we leave it up to economia. But that's the actual canonical rule in the first thousand years is to leave this up to economia. You can look at the canons in the Sixth Council, which specify different situations where baptism is and is not, excuse me, rebaptism is and is not necessary. So it's always been left up to economia. So uh, how does that relate to the questions about Rokor? No, that just sounds like a very sola scriptura type of response. It's okay, so going to the you think going to canon law in the first you think going to canon law in the first thousand years is sola scriptura? No, not at all. But that's like what you just said. Each individual jurisdiction can make its own interpretation. Yeah, so because it's not papal, do you understand that that's how the how do you think that if the canon law at the sixth council speaks that way, then that itself proves that it's not a papal approach to the question, which is what your argument presupposes interesting um oh so no answer to that right just yeah. a slimy interesting interesting <laughs> just absolutely wonderful the, for the oh yeah let's look at the fruits let's look at the fruits of papism in your church how's frank doing over there 
Uh, looks like we converted the entire world, dude. Essentially, so I mean, yeah. Uh, is, does uh, how does how is what is it like in total delusion? I'm just curious. So, uh, do you really think that all those nations are genuinely converted? Don't start now. Don't start repeating my name. Don't start repeating my name. Can you hear me? Of course, I can hear you. In, your NLP doesn't work here, dude. Take your magic practices elsewhere. Take your Santeria. Take your Santeria Roman Catholic Latin Voodoo elsewhere. It doesn't work on me. Okay, another question for you. Dude. Right, but another question because the answers to the previous quote questions, you didn't have an answer to that, right? No, man. I mean, no, 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 dude. no. Dude, the fact that you think the church can be unified shows that you don't believe that the church has always been unified. If you would read the canons of the first seven ecumenical Wait, councils, no, see, you won't do that. You won't do that. You think that's super, you think that's sola scriptura to read the canons of the first seven councils. Unbelievable. Not Unbelievable. All, not at all. So, wait. so but the, the modus operandi of the canons. The modus operandi of the canons of the first seven councils shows our approach to the church. And that's why it's foreign to you. And you won't go look at it. That's why you ignored my response to the first rebuttal that you had. And your only response was, bro. Numbers, bro, numbers, bro, we could the world, bro, numbers. Francis is a disaster. Francis sends more people to the Orthodox church than I could ever dream of. Yeah, I'm not into humanism and joy or dude or liberal. You just approve, you just, you're lying. Now you're lying because you just said that the John 17 prayer, you're a liar. You just said that John 17 prayer is intended to unify the church. I assume you mean the Eastern and Western, the Orthodox Church with the Roman Catholic Church. That's ecumenism. That's ecumenism. That's ecumenism. No, no. The purpose of ecumenism is conversion, Jay. We agree on this, right? I'm not talking about like, changing doctrines and something that's not even possible i'm just trying to use simple the pr do you, so you like, think that jesus's prayer in john 17 wasn't answered you think you think there wasn't a church that was unified in history according to you no i absolutely do think there was you a just church. you I just asked me know. about the unification on the basis of john 17. say that again I do you just asked me about the the high priestly prayer of unification in terms of john 17. You said, how can we unify the church as if asking me the question as if we're part of the same church when well, we're not. So what are you talking about? No, I know that. I know you're in schism. And if you die outside the Roman Catholic Church, there is no Ooh. salvation. You go to so here you go with this you. arrogant nonsense. No, so no, so no, this no, is no, the no, arrogance no, of you. Charity. So not so charity. I want you to tell me I want you to tell me how Francis is a true pope with all the madness that he engages in. So I will answer that, but that's not on the topic. Of yeah, so, topic. right. So no I, answer. I can talk all about him, whatever you want, dude. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, about let's talk about Vatican I. Okay. Do you affirm Vatican I? Absolutely. Okay. Do you affirm the ordinary teaching uh, that the papacy can never err in that either? In dogmatic pronouncements and also in the, in the, uh, I'm outside sounding my balls right now. Sorry about that. The uh, universal ordinary teaching. Do you affirm that that right. is also infallible Absolutely. and protected by the charism? Absolutely. Okay. So do you affirm that mortalium animos is part of the ordinary teaching? Yes. Okay. So how is ecumenist and interfaith activities in 1928 apostasy and then by the 60s the work of the Holy Spirit? The ones that you all participated in as well. Uh, I'm uh, is my church built on one one bishop and one one see. I don't know. You tell me. Oh, so so you don't know anything about orthodoxy. So you know nothing about a decentralized church where all the bishops are equal. Which, if one bishop goes and participates in that, do you think that that means that the entire orthodox church participated? No, it doesn't work like that because my church does not believe in the infallibility of the patriarch of Constantinople or any bishop. Your church is erected the entire thing on one dude and all of his ordinary teaching. So you tell me, how is something apostasy in 1928 and now the work of the Holy Spirit in the 1960s after Vatican II? No, yeah, I got you, dude. I'm tracking with you. Okay, so no argument. Yeah, so no argument, just yeah. slimy statements. Exactly, exactly. You try to chat with you, bad. I just love the numbers argument so much because I mean, by that logic, we
logic, we saw these become charismatics. Uh, shouldn't we be Muslims? I mean, like, aren't Muslims going to surpass Catholics? I mean, numbers, bro. Track it with you, bro. Let's unpack that. Well, because like a quarter of Catholics are charismatic already. And yeah, that's a good point. You know, unifying prayer of John 17. Like, what does that have to do with Catholic versus Orthodox? I mean, I mean, if, if, he, if he thinks that it's about re reconciling the Orthodox Church with the Roman Catholic Church, then that's ecumenism because that means that Jesus' prayer was not answered and his church split, right? Yeah, the, the, it, it, it's, it, it's, the funny thing is, is they'll, the, the, the Catholics will sound just like us when they talk to the Protestants and when it comes to the first millennia of the church. And then when we cite the first millennium teaching, suddenly, suddenly the people that don't believe in doctrinal development have, have a completely alien doctrine to the, for, to the seven ecumenical councils. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, Roman Catholics love to do this thing where they look at events in history as signs of divine favor. Okay, so but what about when bad things happen, right? I mean, by that logic, the schism between the East and the West is a giant blight upon your church because you had a giant chunk of the church leave you. So even in their own logic of looking at historical events, all they do is cherry pick the ones that they think well, God's given us the big numbers, so we win, bro. Okay, so does that mean that the Arians and the semi-Arians were the true church in the 4th century? Because they far outnumbered Athanasius and the Orthodox. That's just such a dumb argument. Point had crazy...